Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. So I'm back in the garage to walk through my ultra premium custom wheel build for my 2020 Cannondale System 6 road bike. This is the second of a two part series I'm doing on my do it myself wheel build project. In my first video I explained which wheel parts I use for my build, why I chose those specific components, and did a side by side comparison of my custom wheels with the ultra posh zip 454 NSWs to see how they measure up against one of the most expensive road bike wheel sets on the market today. Today, I get to show off my assembled wheel set, tell you what I liked and didn't like in building up these wheels, and finish it off with a final weigh in to see how they measure up against the Zip 454 NSWs. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I do a final tally of what I paid to build my custom wheel set and see how it compares to the Zips. Okay, let's get to it. Before I show you my completed wheels, I just want to talk a bit about the wheel building process itself in case there are others out there thinking of building up a similar spec wheels. I knew when I chose the parts for this wheel build that it would make for a more difficult build than the ones I've done before for two reasons. First, the choice of spokes. As I mentioned in my earlier video, I used two different aerobladed spokes for each wheel to keep the wheels as light as possible, but also to add just a bit more durability to them. I used a slightly stronger and heavier DT Swiss Aero Comp spoke for the side of the wheel that takes most of the torque forces. So that's the disc side on the front wheel and the drive side on the rear wheel. For the opposite side of the wheels, I used DT Swiss's lightest spoke, the Aerolite. Generally, I found that the lighter you go with spokes, the tougher it is to tension the wheels during the touring process. The first issue is that the spokes tend to wind up more easily. So you have to be really diligent in prepping the spokes and nipples properly and not to over tension the spokes. This is where you really want to make sure to add a drop of lube to the nipple and rim contact point to lessen the friction on the nipple. Another thing is that spokes this light tend to go from under tension to over tension very quickly. So there is less wiggle room for error. You need to take your time, be very precise, and do only minor adjustments to tension at any one time. You simply cannot build up a wheel like this as quickly as if using thicker gauge spokes. The other thing that made this build challenging is that I went with a tubeless rim, not a tubeless ready rim. A tubeless ready rim has access holes drilled into the rim for every single spoke opening. When the wheel is assembled, you have to run some tubeless tape around the rim to make it airtight. It's the way most tubeless wheels are made, simply because it's easier and cheaper to do it this way. I prefer tubeless rims, which have no access holes drilled in the rim for the nipples. It's a cleaner look and means you don't have to worry about adding or maintaining rim tape. The only disadvantage is that building up a wheel takes longer as each nipple needs to be fished through the valve hole to the hole opening on the rim. You can get good at doing this by using a magnet to guide the nipple to the proper spot, but it's still a time consuming process. This is the first time I used straight pull spokes on a wheel build and I gotta say that I liked it quite a bit. I just find that it gives the wheel a very clean and custom look. Because you have to use the lacing pattern the hub was designed for, it makes it almost impossible to make a mistake when lacing up the wheels. And they lace up really quickly. The DT Swiss 180 hubs are designed for a two cross lacing pattern on both sides of the wheel. So you can see here that each spoke crosses the adjacent spoke at two points, hence the name two cross. Also, because of the spoke design, De-stressing a wheel with straight pull spokes is not as necessary as when using J-bend spokes. So there's less chance of you losing spoke tension on your first few rides by not having de-stressed the wheel properly. The major downside with straight pull spokes is that you are restricted in what lacing pattern you can use. But also, straight pull spokes are just harder to find and a bit more expensive than J-bend spokes. Okay, enough about the wheel building process. Let's look at my final set of wheels. As for the weight, I mentioned in my previous video that I wanted these wheels to be sub 1450 grams. The DT Swiss Boast calculator gave me a weight of 1415 grams for the complete wheel build, excluding wheel accessories like the valve, rotors, cassette, and tires. 
I weighed both wheels on two different precision scales and the weight came out on both scales to exactly 655 grams for the front and 745 grams for the rear for a combined weight of just 1400 grams. That's just a measly 42 grams heavier than the Zip 454 NSWs, but my weight is measured while I'm comparing it to the Zip's claimed weight, which may not be its true weight. I ordered parts from retailers in China, the US, and the UK. My gross costs, including taxes, duties, brokerage, and shipping, came to $3,314.26, all in. The Zip 545 NSWs are currently retailing in Canada for $5,700 plus tax for a gross total of $6,441. So my custom wheels were over $3,000 less expensive than the Zips. I'm like completely happy with that. I think these wheels look as nice as any premium wheel set out there. Still snow on the ground, so the weather isn't good enough to try these out, but I'll get them out for a test ride early this spring and report back. So that's about all I have to say about my custom wheel set. I hope some of this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please pass them along. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.